my grandfather was a very famous commercial real estate developer, but more famous for being in many ways a, 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 a philosopher uh, about cities. In the 40s and 50s, he was very, very ahead of the curve in terms of predicting what would happen if we failed to invest in the inner city and kept and keep it a vital place that people wanted to not only come to work but live. He kind of predicted the, the phenomenon of flight to the suburbs by the middle and upper middle class and the collapse of the inner city. He talked about the perils of low density development, you know, development based on the highway as opposed to mass transit and the way that that, that would create sprawl. He saw a problem that a lot of people were sort of just writing off as a permanent, pro a permanent condition in American life. People were saying, well, 40 million people living below the poverty line and these decrepit neighborhoods and, and abandoned buildings. And this is just a part of the inherent reality of American capitalism, where there's going to be a certain part of the market that the, that the for-profit real estate market and the government don't cover, that gets let, falls between the cracks. And when a lot of that stuff came true in the 60s and 70s, um, he was he was looked at by a lot by a new generation of progressive urban planners and urban thinkers as a real uh, visionary. He basically said, "Why are we accepting this condition? Why are we accepting the conventional wisdom that this is a problem that can't be solved? That's insane." And he rallied. He pulled in a lot of really young and brilliant people. He pulled them out of the financial sector, and he sort of said. We need to envision, we need to come up with a mechanism that, that makes it make sense to invest in that part of the housing market. And so he and some very young, very brilliant people came up with the architecture of, of, of what became the low-income housing tax credit, the federal low-income housing tax credit. It was a revolutionary idea. It was, um, it was a, an idea that of how you could incentivize people, banks and companies, to make investments in equity funds that invested in affordable housing by, through a federal tax credit program that just gave it a slightly boosted return through federal tax credits. And everybody across all the whole political spectrum, Republican, Democrat, loved this program because it addressed a need without throwing government money at it. it it incentivized uh, you know, banks and businesses to invest and get a return, but it aimed it at a part of the marketplace that wasn't being dealt with. For the lawyers and the, the kids studying finance and business and housing and urban planning, you know, those are the ideas that, that the next wave's gonna have to come up with. And it's gonna come in areas that people aren't expecting it to right now. It's gonna come in things like, like energy or efficiency. Never assume that there isn't a solution to a complex problem. There, it's usually just because somebody's not paying it, not willing to put in, you know, the time and the brain power. Most people are on cruise control most of the time. They just are. They're they're cruising along, taking things as they are. People who are innovators tend to recognize a need before other people. That's all. You know what I mean? They sort of say. I want this and it's missing, but then they don't stop at that point. You know, they don't sort of go, oh, that's a bummer. They go, hmm, like, there must be a way to do that. Mm -hmm.